Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, introducing the out of the box integration of Spring Security with Spring Boot. Just as it does with other modules, Spring Boot provides a sensible default security configuration which may be adjusted using application properties. Let's get started. I've opened the project in the Spring Tool Suite or STS. Open the Maven POM file. Add the Spring Boot starter dependency for Spring Security. When the application is started, Spring Boot will detect Spring Security on the class path and automatically configure it with default values. Let's run the application to see Spring Security's out-of-the-box behavior. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. As part of Spring Security's default behavior, an in-memory user details object is created with the username user and a password is generated each time the application starts. Scroll up through the logs to find the line which begins with the words using default security password and copy the password value. I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client to demonstrate. All of the web service endpoints are now secured by basic auth. Notice I'm prompted for a username and password because my authorization header value is not valid. I must add the authorization HTTP header to every web service request. I'll create the header value using the credentials generated by Spring Security. Now I receive a successful response. Let's look at an actuator endpoint. Remember, Actuator is Spring Boot's production monitoring and management package. Actuator is also secured by Spring Security. By providing the basic auth header, I'm able to receive a successful response from Actuator. Let's examine the out-of-the-box features of Spring Security integrated with Spring Boot. Static paths like CSS, JS, and images remain public. All other paths are secured by basic authentication. Security events are automatically published through Spring's Application Event Publisher. You may create listeners for these events. Cross-site request forgery, cross-site scripting, and HTTP strict transport security protections are enabled by default. When using both Spring Security and Actuator on a Spring Boot application, the following security features are automatically applied to Actuator. All of the Actuator endpoints are secured with basic auth. Security events are converted into audit events by Actuator's audit service. The default in-memory user is also granted a role named admin, which is necessary to access actuator endpoints. As you can see, the out-of-the-box integration between Spring Boot and Spring Security is quite powerful. Let's see how to leverage Spring Boot's rich configuration capabilities to fine-tune Spring Security. In the Spring Tool Suite, navigate to the Source Main Resources Config directory and open the Application Properties file. Create a new section for Spring Security Configuration. Let's begin with a few simple changes. Since anyone with access to the Spring Boot Reference Guide knows the default username, let's add the Security Username property to set the username to LeanStacks. 
it's also possible to override the randomly generated password with a specific one. Add the security user password property to declare a specific password value. In the Spring Boot Reference Guide, Appendix A contains a list of common application properties which may be placed into your application configuration file to alter Spring Boot's default configuration. Let's scroll down to the Security section. As you can see, it's possible to enable and disable Spring Boot's capabilities such as cross-site request forgery, cross-site scripting, and HSTS. You may use properties to customize basic, basic auth security, HTTP headers, session security management, excuse me, security session management, SSL requirements, and more. The ability to configure Spring Security through the Spring Boot Configuration Facility is very powerful. However, it does not facilitate more advanced scenarios requiring custom authentication providers, user detail services, etc. We will discuss those scenarios in future videos in this series. When both the actuator and Spring Security dependencies are present on a Spring Boot application class path, actuator endpoints are automatically secured. The actuator endpoints may be accessed using basic auth with the same username and password declared in the properties file, or automatically generated when the application starts. As you can see in the reference guide, properties may be used to configure the integration between actuator and Spring Security. One difference is that actuator endpoints require a different security role, also known as a granted authority, to access them. By default, the role name is ADMIN in all capital letters. However, you may use the Management Security Role property to change the role value. Let's change the role to SysAdmin. This role is automatically assigned to the default security user. As you could see in the reference guide previously, it's possible, though not recommended, to disable Spring Security for actuator endpoints altogether by setting the Management Security Enabled property to false. It is enabled by default. The Actuator Security Session Management value defaults to stateless, requiring authentication for each call made to an actuator endpoint. This may be changed using the Management Security Sessions property. Valid values for this property are the same as the security sessions property. Possible values are always, never, if required, or stateless. We use stateless so that our web services application does not create HTTP sessions. Let's run the application once again to test the security configuration changes. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. Notice this time that the generated password value is not present in the logs. I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client to demonstrate. Notice that the basic auth header value that I used last time is no longer valid. I need to update the header value to the username and password values that were declared in the application properties file. Now the request is successfully authenticated and returns a response as expected. Next, let's test an actuator endpoint. Notice that I must also update the basic auth header value to use the new credentials. The endpoint now returns a good response. Remember that we changed the role used for actuator endpoint access. 
This role is automatically granted to the in-memory user created when the application starts. Therefore, our LeanStacks user has the role of sysadmin and is permitted to send requests to actuator endpoints. In this video, we demonstrated the default capabilities and configuration of Spring Security when integrated into a Spring Boot application. In the next few videos in this series, learn to create advanced Spring Security capabilities using Java configuration. This includes custom authentication providers and user detail services. We'll also learn how to use multiple security configuration adapters in a single application to facilitate different security configurations for different sets of web assets. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the LeanStacks YouTube channel and follow the LeanStacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this video, see the GitHub repository URL in this video's description.